and welcome to this week's Battle of the Ports and Danny Sullivan's in the heat from Leyland Corporation in 1991. Yep, the same Leyland that produced the god awful Double Dragon 5 that we looked at a few weeks ago. Thankfully this game is better and it should be as it stars American indie car driver Danny Sullivan and features the tracks from the kart series of the early 1990s. In the Heat features 4 player capability and was similar in gameplay to Super Off-Road. Players earn money based on their race finishing positions which is spent on improving their car. The race season accumulates with the Trade West Speed Bowl which loosely resembles the Indianapolis 500. There are 14 tracks in the arcade version, all of which are based on actual IndyCar racetracks. The game may not look much but it's rather fun to play, however saying that, the AI can be quite cheap at times as it rams the crap out of you on corners. What is funny though, is when the AI bursts into flames after wasting all its energy trying to take you out. In March of 1992, we saw a few home computer ports, starting with the Atari ST. This port and the following home computer ports were all handled by the sales curve. I'm surprised to hear some sampled audio on the startup of this game. I have to admit, I never expected that. The core game is presented well here on the ST. We get a game that, while not looking as good as the arcade, is clearly recognisable. Sadly, there's no speech or music while playing, but we do get some reasonable engine sounds and crash effects. The game is even two players simultaneous, which is a bonus point. If only the controls were just slightly less twitchy, this would be a fantastic port. As it is, I'd still recommend it to ST fans. Next up is the Amiga version, which is even better than the ST in every way. The play area is now larger, there are a few more colours used, we have some of the arcade speech and better quality music. I even think the controls are slightly better here as well. Overall a great port of the arcade game. Oh, and it's 3 player as well. Hey! 
Pit, pit. Time to move on to the 8 bit systems with the Commodore 64 release. This port lacks a lot from the arcade but still manages to be okay. You do need to keep your eye on the track, mind you, in order to know when to pit, as there are no guys holding up billboards in this version. Instead, the pit lane flashes, indicating that it is time to pit in. Audio wise, we have some basic music or sound effects. Sadly, we can't have both together. As far as how it plays, well, it lacks the smoothness of the 16-bit versions, but it's not that bad. August of 1992 saw the NES, or NES for American viewers, get a port of Indie Heat from Rare, but published by Trade West. Sadly, this version is probably the most ugly, although it does have some nice card turning animation. But that isn't going to save the fact that this port only contains 9 of the original 14 tracks. What's also strange is that they've been renamed. Pocono, which is based on Pocono Raceway, has been inexplicably moved to Illinois and Indianapolis has been renamed Trade West after the publisher of this version. The Nez Michigan track is not the same as the arcade exclusive track of the same name. I'd say playability wise this does play better than the C64 version we just took a look at, but I wouldn't put it in the same league as the Amiga port. You may have thought the NES version was the last port, but nope. The Mega Drive also got a port, however it was never released. I wonder if this is completed. The reason I say that is because it pretty much sucks compared to the Amiga version. For the start the graphics on most tracks look worse. There is less speech and the music is awful in most cases. But the worst thing is how it plays. The controls are awfully twitchy and the stages have some very questionable collision detection in areas. The cars don't seem to move at a steady pace either. The AI is incredibly cheap too. The only plus point is that the cars scale better than the Amiga and ST versions.
take a look at all those versions of Indie Heat running side by side. 